And who would have thought that one of the great stories is how the human being invented something that changed its own brain. And that's what happened. So it begins with this wonderful insight that I had that is so simple. And it did begin the book, Roost in the Squid. The idea after I was just doing all this research was like what one of Piaget is simple, the simple thoughts can explain the most complexity. And the simple thought was the brain wasn't meant to read. It absolutely has not a single gene. It doesn't have a single region or spot, locus, that's for reading. Nothing. Zip. So how in the world did that happen? Well, what the brain does have is the capacity to rearrange its parts that are genetically programmed. Now, language is a genetic aspect. It's a gift, it's a contribution, vision. We human beings have these genetic programs and the baby is born and hears words and learns to speak. Just not the way reading works. What reading is, is an invention that came out of the most primitive way of making a symbol represent a concept, pictures. But then it got ever more complicated. And so the brain had to change itself. It first had to make new connections between the visual areas and the language and the concept areas. So you have this very basic circuit that is part of who we are as symbol makers, but now symbolization was taking a new direction. And to make that symbol much more automatic, it began, you got, so that you got these connections that were first really slow, they learned to become automatic. And they could do that because of something very interesting about the visual system. The visual system immediately can make a representation of certain things so that we survive. Um, the letter is actually using the same areas that we used to look at a track and say, danger or at a berry and say food so we learn we use the same automatic if you will networks that our reflexes gave us or, or we learned to survive and reading built on those early circuits now the amazing thing about reading though two amazing things one it shows us, human beings, human neuroscientists, how the brain learns anything new. It does it by reorganizing and making new networks, and those networks become cumulative, and they begin to expand. So this very primitive network that was reading that is what a five-year-old or a six-year-old uses, put the visual system together with the, the language system. Here's where I'm going to go more complex than you asked. It will depend on. on the writing system, how much that network has to expand or where it expands. So that if we're talking about that first Egyptian hieroglyph and Sumerian system, probably the Egyptians, we now think actually were before the Sumerians. It was so basic. You know, the picture, the concept, the word. But we got really interesting as a species. We figured out the alphabetic principle. And it took about 2,000 years to move from those early writing systems that were more pictographic, but they were coming closer and closer to what we now know of as a syllabary or a logosyllabary or an alphabet. But it took a very long time 
to get the concept that the words we use, which stand for things and ideas, those words are made of sounds and that each sound can be represented by a symbol. Now the Greeks and the Phoen the Greeks used the Phoenicians and the Phoenicians undoubtedly were influenced by an early Semitic abjab. You know, that gets too complex, but the Greeks went into this almost perfectionistic mode and made an almost perfect alphabet. Now, thud didn't get used for years, centuries. This is centuries before we get down to Socrates and Plato and Aristotle. And you remember, Socrates didn't want us to read. He said we would have a recipe for forgetting, yep. not for memory. So this beautiful story is that historically, we took a long time to emerge in different writing systems, but especially the alphabet. But that actually is recapitulated in us, each child. The child begins with something really simple. Just get the language, the word, the concept, and, and the visual system together. It still takes a very big cognitive leap to think that words have sounds. 